on today's show. We'll discuss the Celtics' gritty Game 5 win, LeBron's fatigue issues, and why Lou was outcoached. Tony Delk joins us to talk about his 53-point night and Antoine Walker's shimmy. And Draymond's rough Game 4 stars in a brand new edition of the Meme Team. It's Thursday, May 24th. The starter starts now. Good evening, sweet world, and welcome to The Starters, presented by Jack Daniels Tennessee Honey. Whether you're joining us live right now on NBA TV, watching later on YouTube, maybe listening to the podcast, doesn't matter, we're happy to have you. I'm Jay Skeets, and alongside me, as always, that's Tess Millis. Good evening. To his right, the international man of mystery, taking it to the max, Lee Ellis. Friend. Lily. Lily. And last, certainly not least, over yonder, that's the bearded one, that's Trey Kirby. Hey! Hey, yo. TK, what's up? Well, I'm here at the internet looking for your best tweets at hashtag the starters. And guys, the Cavs might have lost last night. They might be facing elimination, but there is some good news. They might be getting a dog. That's right. The Cleveland Plain Dealer reports that the Cleveland Cavaliers are seriously considering getting a dog after having fun with a therapy dog named Remington earlier in the season. Look, they've had a rough postseason. This could definitely cheer them pup. But it sounds like a headline from the dinner table. Is it any different than Skeets and Wife seriously considering getting a dog after petting yams? I don't think so. But it brings us to today's question. What are some, <laughs> some other mundane NBA headlines you would like to see? For instance, what if we had one that said, sources say Jason Tatum is hoping to schedule a haircut early next week, gotta stay fresh, or maybe report CJ McCollum is making beef wellington for dinner tonight, Ooh. sounds delicious, or go clickbaity with it. You'll never guess which NBA players like music I hear Grant Hill does, but we wanna hear from you. So hit us up on Twitter with your best mundane NBA headlines. Make them as boring as you can. Send us your worst tweets to hashtag the starters. We'll check them out later. Can Remington hit a three-point shot on the road? Is he like Air Sign him up! Yeah, sign him up. That's my point here. All right, we got a fun show tonight. Former NBA guard Tony Delk is going to join us live in studio to talk about the West Finals and his 53-point night that he had in the NBA. We got a brand new edition of the meme team. The memes never sleep. We got Lee's very solid play. But let's start with a little true or false looking back at last night's Game 5 of the Eastern Conference Finals. TK, take it away. LeBron James had 26 points, 10 rebounds, and 5 assists in a Game 5 loss against the Celtics last night. And while that might sound fine, it didn't necessarily feel like it. As LeBron looked pretty tired while playing a team-high 39 minutes that left him with no choice but to absolutely crush a bottle of cool, crisp Fiji water. <laughs> True or false, the Celtics wore LeBron down. Well, yeah, because he had to do it all. Again, didn't it feel like one of those games where there was no player movement, no ball movement on his side? I mean, him and Love were the only starters to hit field goals until midway through the third quarter. No one was really helping him out. And I know LeBron is sort of ridiculed for taking plays off offensively and defensively. I think that's one of his strengths, to be able to conserve some energy here and there. Right. And in this instance, he really couldn't. And yeah, he did look tired at the end. But is it a sort of just a, a product of playing in his 98th game of the season? I think it's more of a product of having to do everything on this basketball court for this team when they've been on the road in this series. He leads the league in playoff minutes, field goals, free throws, assists, fifth in rebounds, so he is actually doing everything. But LeBron's also far too smart to ever acknowledge, hey, yeah, I was a bit tired, that's the reason we lost. He knows that even if that is an excuse and a reason they lost, no one's going to care about that. I right. feel like you've just got to go out there and still compete and still com still play. And Ty Lue knows it as well. Like He sort of said, well, he did look a little bit tired. And you watch LeBron, you can see he looks tired. He didn't look too bad in games three and four at home, but in game two, he certainly looked like he ran out of steam there as well. So you talk about 98 games a season. Well, also, this is eighth consecutive finals appearance. He's basically played two extra seasons over those last eight seasons to get here. At some point, it is going to catch up with him. But credit to Boston, though. They still went out there and took care of business in a very, very critical game for them. And part of that was probably to make LeBron do all the work, and it worked for the Celtics. Yeah, LeBron did not have a good game. Whatever the reason, be it the Celtics wore him down or his own teammates wore him down because they couldn't hit a shot, that was sloppy, sloppy LeBron. When, especially when it came to passing. You know, it's one thing if a guy just can't ha hit the shot or he's not attacking as much because his legs aren't under him. It's another thing when LeBron's just throwing the ball away. This is one of the greatest passers of all time. And he threw some very questionable passes, and yeah. he even said as much in his post-game press conference. He went through them all, <laughs> showing <laughs> off his photographic memory, but saying, I don't know, sort of too tight there. Sometimes he blamed the guy that didn't catch it in Jeff Green there was one, but that was the weird part. I, th I just think the energy from these young Celtics, look, they didn't play a great game either. They shot yeah. like 36% and yeah. won this game. But their energy on the defensive end, 
that really disrupted the Cavs, obviously, of course, from hitting shots, but getting up on LeBron. And I said that was something to watch, the turnovers. That's four games now in this series where he had six or more turnovers. Uh, he didn't do. He barely turned the ball over against the Raptors, so mm. they're doing something right. Yeah. Some credit's got to go to those guys. Yeah, and Aaron Baines moving into the starting lineup, yeah. I think definitely helped being a bigger body that LeBron would see after passing his own sure. man because he's going to pass his own man no matter what, especially with a pick. But it's tough for the Cavs, yeah, that they didn't win this one on the road with the Celtics only shooting 36% because they still got to win one on the road in this series to take it. And uh, it's just shocking to see LeBron have to do it all himself after playing so well in games three and four I'm talking about the entire Cavs team and yeah. how they supported him. And then you go on the road and you lay a dud when the other team only shoots Wait, what, 36%. What is happening to George Hill yeah. and J.R. Smith in Boston? I mean, this is another yeah, dud game. Two and a half that. quarters to hit a shot from either of those I know, guys. They finished this, two of 11 and they played well in Cleveland. I know, but this is a problem. It's up to those guys to be better. It's not up to LeBron to make them better. I, I get that. You know, you turn up into a game five, critical game, pivotal game in the series, some say. Yeah. <laughs> you have got to be the one who say, I'm going to take the heat off LeBron tonight. I'm going to be aggressive, get to the free throw line, take some pressure off him on the offensive end and on the defensive end to try to create something as well. We've seen this before, particularly with JR. Can be a fantastic offensive player when he's on, when the ball's falling, when the ball's dropping, he's doing that. When it's not and he's not getting shots, you sometimes wonder what he is actually doing out on the floor and you wonder why Ty Lue sometimes leaves him out there as long as he did because he doesn't contribute. Very quickly, do you think Jason Tatum was the best player on the floor last night? Yeah. And that was a floor that obviously had LeBron playing 40 minutes, as tired as he was. Yeah, and he was amazing defensively as well. I think we, we talk about him you know, being the youngest player now in a conference finals to score 20-plus, right. which is a crazy stat. The youngest player in NBA history, he had 24. But I thought the defense was even more impressive, uh, the way he was energetic. And, you know, we talk about Cleveland being how different they are on the road. Well, Boston is equally as strange and yeah. you know how how they're jekylling and hiding at home compared to to being on the road. Uh, strange game from the Cavs side. Strange game from the Celtics side. They obviously come out and win. And can we just say one thing about LeBron? He is human. You know when you watch those turnovers and he's a little <laughs> tired. I mean he can have a bad night mm -hmm. at the office. Yeah. And it just it just felt like a bad game in, in a way. Even though he shot fifty percent and had twenty six and double digits. And yeah, it's shocking and because we kept saying pivotal, pivotal, pivotal yeah. game yeah. five. This is the one where he'll go out. We're talking last night. Oh, yeah. 40, 50, What's he go for? And instead it was a sloppy, you know, dis disheartening game from him. That was the weird part. It was. But you're right. He's human. He showed it last night, I guess. Next one, Trey. Kyle Korver has been at least the third best Cavalier during the playoffs, so you think he would be on the court all the time during a not pivotal game five, but nope, just 18 minutes. When he was asked about Korver afterwards, Ty Lue had a surprising answer. Well, initially he's been putting Ola J in, so that's been kind of Kyle's matchup when he comes in the game. But he didn't play him tonight, so, you know, it kind of, you know, threw us for a loop. True or false, Ty Lue was out coached. Ty Lue made a mistake not yeah. playing Kyle Korver yeah. more. In this instance, For absolutely. Sure. He's, he's saying, we didn't really play our third best guy, mm. at times our second best guy in Kyle Korver, as many minutes in Game 5, pivotal Game 5, 2-2 series, because the Celtics didn't play their ninth, 10th best guy yeah. in Shemi Ojale. What? Well, sometimes... Wait, just, Korver's too good to keep on the bench. Of course he is, yeah. Sometimes so in playoffs, though, you know, you do go matchup for matchup. That happens a lot. But in this case, this one doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense because Kyle is that guy who hustles on the defensive end, who gives them energy at 37 years old. And also, when he's on the floor, you know LeBron is looking for him a lot to shoot the ball. So yeah. this one, to me, seems like Ty Lue was a little bit caught out in this instance and, and, and made a terrible mistake. Maybe it wouldn't have changed the end result. Yeah. You know, who knows? But for, for Kyle, who's been uh, contributing so well for them in so many areas, it seemed very strange that he was kind of benched last night. Yeah, especially coming off game four when he had three blocks. That weren't really three blocks. It was like two and a half blocks. But still, coming off <laughs> yeah. that game where he was playing defensive... And, and Kyle Korver was asked after the game, you know, why'd you guys lose? And, you know, he wasn't talking about his minutes whatsoever. He just said, well, no flow, no mm. body movement, no ball movement. That's what Kyle Korver is right. in a, an NBA player. He forces ball movement because he's coming off screens. And you don't play him in the entire first quarter when they got down. I, I mean, that's part of why they lost, for sure. And, and even if you buy Coach Lou saying, okay, we didn't play him in the first quarter because we were confused that Shemi didn't come in. Well, what about the third quarter? Mm. Korver played like two minutes in the third quarter as well. It's not like J.R. Smith was giving you a great game up to that point. That's it was so weird that stranger, he still yeah. didn't play Corver. Very got to play more than 18 minutes, yeah, for sure. Not, not a good one, I think, from Coach Lou there last night. we got to take a break. When we return, NCAA champ and 10-year NBA vet Tony Delk joins us live in studio. Don't go anywhere.
back with the starters. Guest season continues, and we're happy to have with us today NCAA champion and 10-year NBA vet Tony Delk. Tony, thanks for swinging by, man. Guys, thanks for having me on. We, My pleasure to be here. We really appreciate it. We got uh, some fun questions about your NBA career, okay. but before we get into that, Game 5, Warriors-Rockets tonight in the Western Conference Finals. Have you been shocked by oh. this one being 2-2? Who do you like going forward? It's a, a tough one to figure out here. To be honest with you, I have been shocked. Game four was more of a surprise. With Golden State going up 10, I'm thinking like, you know, game over with, 3-1. Yep. And I like the way they responded. CP3 making tough shots. James Harden getting some defensive stops, which we haven't seen him do all year. Right. But that team showed resilience. A team that was built around James Harden, and they put the right defensive players around him to hide his weaknesses. But by putting them on KD, it allows him to respect the player and play better defense. But this team has been number one, and uh, they went on the, home, on the Warriors' home court. They've won 16 consecutive games and playoff games, and they've ended that streak. You think they can do this then? You think you can take down the mighty Warriors there? No, I'm going oh, with okay. Golden State <laughs> so I I'm still down going that. with the Warriors. I think if, if Iguodala, as well as Klay Thompson, both of those guys are healthy, it gives yep. them the wing, the added wings they needed. And also, I think with KD, he's going to have a a better game he had last time. And I think Steph, they're playing Steph physical. He has to play more through the contact. All right. Mm -hmm. well, let's get into your NBA career. As I said, 10 years in the league. What's the, what's the story behind the number you wore? Because you wore double ah, zero. And not I, a lot I'm, I'm of guys glad, in I'm NBA glad history. You, I'm glad you brought that up. All right. I, I have a book coming out called Shoot is a Story Behind the Double Zero. The double zero. My brother wore it in college. So okay. that was the reason why I wore it. I came down to Atlanta one summer. Played my brother, finally beat him, and uh, <laughs> I decided to take the number double zero. So it's more, it's been in the family, and my first maybe 10, 11 years from, from high school to college to the, I think my fourth or fifth year in the NBA, I always had that double zero. And it brought me great luck. So sometime I'm in Vegas, I might throw a little money <laughs> on, the, uh, on the double zero just to see what happens. Right, okay, well, there you go. And you got the book you said coming out? It's yes, the Shoot? book called Shoot is the Story right. Behind Double Zero. And that brother was Ricky Delk, and I have two other brothers, Leslie and David. And those are the guys that really taught me the game of basketball from a fundamental standpoint. And before I ever played AAU basketball, they were the ones that taught me how to play the game. So I had to contribute all my um, NBA experience to my brother as well as my uh, coach, Coach Patino, and my high school coach, uh, Rick Sullivan, who allowed me to get up a lot of shots and lead the state and scoring for two years in a row. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> well, it's funny you bring up scoring. Your NBA claim to fame, no doubt, is the night you go for 53 yes, points. Yes, absolutely. You're with the Suns. You played the Kings. This is back in 2001. What yes. do you remember from that night? You shot something like 20 from 27 yeah, from the field. Yeah, yeah. No three-pointers. That's, that's, Which that's, is that's bonkers. amazing, right? It is. It is. <laughs> what, what do you remember, though, from this game? You know what? I think I had just left Sacramento the year before, and I wanted to go back and play with them, and uh, they didn't have enough money. And they offered me a two-year deal, and Phoenix offered me a six-year deal, which okay. was for more lucrative, uh, for more money. Sure. So I had to go take the six years. But mm -hmm. I also wanted to play the shooting guard, and going to Phoenix allowed me to play the shooting guard with Jason Kidd. And Jason was... Probably, I played with Jason Steve Nash. Those guys were the easiest to play with because they set you up. They did a great job facilitating, but Jason just, he didn't want to shoot the ball at that point in time, so right. it would need more shots for me. <laughs> right. I enjoyed playing with Jason. And you were just feeling it that night. It was, just that one, was, of it was one of those nights, yeah. you know, but I, I've had nights like that before, but not to that magnitude of getting that many shots up. Right. But just playing in, in a great system that Scott Scott had and being a role player, he also ran plays for me, so I felt a part of the offense. Cool. All right. Well, uh, you played for eight different teams. Yes. In your 10 years. I mean, yes. you bounced around a little bit I here. I did. We man. got a list. Yeah, there, there's the, the photo of you in every jersey. Yeah, you see <laughs> the zeros. double zeros. You know what? I'm so connected to all the equipment guys, so whenever I call them, I need, <laughs> yeah. I need socks, I need jerseys. So it was some benefits behind that. I bet. You know, I, I bet. enjoyed just my, my experience in the NBA, and then on seven of those years, I played in the playoffs. Right. So I was kind of like a good luck piece. If you traded for oh, yeah. me, uh, your team was probably going to go to the playoffs. Right. Do you, do you have a favorite team of those, those eight squads that you played for? It would have to be Phoenix. It is Phoenix. Yeah, because, you yeah. know, Phoenix and Sacramento. Sacramento reminded me so much of, uh, of Kentucky because of how we played together. We all were joining. Everyone was connected. We sacrificed for one another. I enjoyed that experience. And then just getting a chance to play with Jason Kidd. You know, he made the game easier for a role player like myself. And uh, some of my... In the later years, it was more about just going to the right, the right situation. But uh, during my experience, I enjoyed playing with 
some of the greats of the NBA. For sure. And, uh, you know, just let you know how connected we are. We just still consider ourselves to be a big family. Even Rip, Rip Hamilton and I, who will be on NBA TV with tonight, yeah. we got a chance to play uh, three months together in, uh, in Detroit and went to the Eastern Conference Finals and lost to that Miami team that I thought we should have won in 2006. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. They went on to win the title yes. that year. That's yes. exactly right. Well, one, one teammate that you had in multiple spots, both in college, a couple times <laughs> in the NBA, Antoine Walker. Yes. Do you have any great Antoine Walker stories? Because you spent a lot of time with him, both in college the, and the NBA. The great eight, yeah, there, there's a lot of stories yeah. with Antoine. <laughs> you know, just with practicing and, uh, you know, but just he was a player. When I look back at his career and how well he played, you know, he would be tailor-made for this game right now. Right. He, he shot a lot of threes then. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, didn't yeah. it didn't matter. It didn't matter. He didn't era. make a lot of them, yeah. but he shot a lot he of them. He shot a lot of them, <laughs> right. but it was kind of like um, every time he got traded, I'm like, why are we getting traded together? Yeah. And yeah. going to take my shot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He loved to shoot the ball more than I did. But I enjoy my, my kids like Antoine because he was always a person that he gave. He was a kind person. And I think when people start looking at Antoine, and to look at his situation with his money, Antoine was a guy that if you needed something, he gave you a shirt off his back. He uh-huh. gave you money. He made sure that, you know, he, he turned a bad situation into a good situation, and a lot of people took advantage of Antoine. Huh. Mm. Did he ever teach you the shimmy? I didn't learn the shimmy. You didn't learn yeah, the shimmy. Learn the shimmy. <laughs> uh-huh. I'm disappointed, you know, but I did see him do that shimmy a couple of times, and then I was like, Antoine. Don't be shimmying, man. Yeah. <laughs> Don't try to win this game. Here. <laughs> Stop shimmying. Yeah, give me, give me the ball. Well, now we got Steph Curry doing it. Back. The shimmy's back, Tony. It's, it's here to stay, I think. That's awesome. We can't thank you enough for coming on. We really I appreciate, appreciate you guys it. having me on. Thanks, Catch Tony. Tony Delk tonight on Game Time. Get you all set for tonight's Game 5 of the Western Conference Finals. We've got to take a break. Lots more still to come on the show tonight when we return. Draymond Green, he just really brought it this week in a brand new edition of the Meme Team. Uh, Don't go anywhere. The Starters is brought to you by Jack Daniels Tennessee Honey, official partner of the NBA. Welcome back to the show. Every week, we scour the internet to bring you the meme team, our favorite weird and wacky moments from the past seven days. Let's do it. At number five, Al Horford's famous flinch is back. You know when a ball comes off the rim, Al Horford just loves doing that. (laughs) He was ready for this one too. Yeah, Yeah, he was. Just a flashback here, some of the great moments. As he told Celtics.com, he does this just to give his teammates a laugh. (laughs) They must be loving this right now though. (laughs) these classic flinches. I think he does it for the meme team. <laughs> it's a guaranteed that, spot. That one was late. And this one, very rare, not on the free throw. <laughs> uh, this week, some samples of Curry's new shoes hit Twitter. That's a unique look. I'm sure the internet will go gently on them. Oh, no. <laughs> Looks like a hovercraft toy. At official review, thought the shoes looked like they were about to go to battle with G.I. Joe. <laughs> At the Goodson. Thought it was Doug on the court wearing clawed hoppers. And Moon up in Brampton, Ontario, thinks Curry is about to be looking like Shadow in Sonic Riders. All right. At number three, some pregame routines. LeBron's just reading. Well, what is he reading? How to say goat in all languages? He's reading The Alchemist. <laughs> How about The Dream and Jimmy Goldstein looking at a magazine <laughs> about Jimmy Goldstein? Oh, yeah, I love this guy. Yeah. And then Chris Paul gets wa- caught watching Orange is the New Black, <laughs> and he looks like the dramatic chipmunk. Wow. <laughs> That's an old meme right there. Great now. meme. Oldie but a goodie right there. <laughs> At number two, uh, Draymond Green, he had a rough game four in Oakland. It started with James Harden putting him on a poster, literally. There it is, or a uh, digital wallpaper for your phone. <laughs> but a little bit later in the game, it got worse. He botched the dunk. Oh. And Worldwide Wob saw similarities in the denial to that 2 a.m. Hey, text message. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, people won't focus on that hardened poster if you also get blocked by the rim. Smart. <laughs> nice. yeah. some classic memes in this one. Go, go. At number one, Joel Embiid, go, go. summer vacation is very meme worthy. He doesn't want to go down this slide. <laughs> you got it, man. You got it. Let's go. He really doesn't want to go Push down. Him. It's not happening. Nope, nope, not doing it. It's not in the contract. Well, he finally oh, went hey, down. There you go, big guy. This was just the start of his fun. He gets on the Lazy River, probably took about four people to flip him right there. <laughs> and then he uh, returns the favor. Hey, get out of the way. I got to do some flipping here. <laughs> I got to do some flipping. 
It's supposed to be lazy, uh, Joel. Flip yeah. on the lazy river. High anxiety river. <laughs> and he's playing with some old dudes, the Bad Boy Club. Is, <laughs> it's titled down there, and then uh, get just, off me. He just throws oh, it down on this wow. guy, unfortunately. Well, he, he got so hot on vacation, he had to throw some shade as he did it. Oh, Aaron oh, Baines. Oh. Aaron Baines. Oh man. What a line, Tassie. Yeah, wrote that myself. Oh, <laughs> throw some shade because he was hot. <laughs> when we come back, Lily hits us with the very solid play. Don't go anywhere. The all NBA teams were announced today. Here's a look at the all NBA first team. Harden and Lillard there are your guards. LeBron, Durant, your forwards, Anthony Davis. You're a big man in the middle. All NBA second team, Westbrook and DeRozan, the guards, Giannis, LaMarcus Aldridge, and Joel Embiid. And the All NBA third team, Curry and Oladipo, with Jimmy Butler, Paul George, and Carl Anthony Towns. We're going to talk about all three of those All NBA teams and the snubs on tomorrow's Drop Podcast. Get your questions in right now. Email us, the starters at NBA.com. Tonight, though, we got game five of the Western Conference Finals between the Dubs and the Rockets. This one in Houston, 9 p.m. Eastern on TNT. Curry looking sharp, CP3 looking sharp. Cleaned up that jacket, yeah. looks like. Should be a good one, yeah. Took it to the dry cleaner, got that paint off. Uh, we asked you, what are some other mundane NBA headlines? You hit us up on Twitter, hashtag the starters. Trey, you got a few of the best ones. Yeah, some super boring ones. This one comes from Tom who says, Celtics guard Kyrie Irving is torn on the decision of choosing between white toast and multi-grain. Go with the grain, buddy. Sammy breaking, despite previous reports, F.A. Udo to serve pigs in a blanket, no longer pizza rolls for next week's book club meeting. Dress accordingly. But a headline I would read, Anil says, Lee Ellis is teaching NBA rookies mm. how to dress like a gentleman. Click, please. All right. <laughs> Clickbait right there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lily, VSP. Oh, we know the game, but who gets it? I want to talk more about uh, helping rookies how to dress. No, it's a boomerang here from Terry Rozier. Hands it off there to Bainesy. And just watch Terry goes to the corner, gets it back and knocks it down. It's a uh, the first basket of the game for the Celtics. I was pretty happy. Because <laughs> uh, your work was done. <laughs> Good my, work, my work was done, but here it is again. It's a netball play. It's a boomerang. Not quite a swish bomb. Close, but that's what I call a very solid play. So Whoa. Many turns. So what, a, many turns. what a lean back right there. <laughs> <laughs> now it's time for the highlight that wasn't. We were all shocked to see Tristan Thompson hit a shot. A long one. After the whistle. Long for Woo! Tristan. Whoa! Nice touch. That might be a swish bomb. Yeah, very close. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Surprised he didn't try to work the ref to get that to count. You know, sometimes they're like, yeah, yeah. yeah count that. Yeah, 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 count yeah. that. Count that. Shooting foul. Right. That's it for us tonight. Thanks so much to Tony Delk for swinging by the studio. Thanks for you for joining us, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Enjoy the game five tonight. We'll see you Friday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. And of course, we got the drop podcast in the morning. Thanks for joining us, folks. And remember, the Warriors are winning tonight. Ooh. We were wrong last oh, night. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> the Cavs, that means the Rockets are winning. There you go. Embrace the night, people. Someone will win tonight, guaranteed. Nice. Bold. What? Ricky. What is that? Hey, what's up, Rick? <laughs> Ricky's winning. <laughs>